Hey everybody, Cole here with Classic Mini DIY, and on today's episode, we're gonna be continuing the supercharger build. So, let's get to it. Today's episode is brought to you by you. That's right. Every single episode created on Classic Mini DIY is made with the help of our patrons and our long-term part sponsor, 7 Mini Parts. If you want to see more mini stuff and more videos in the future, please consider supporting the channel on patreon.com forward slash classic mini DIY or by checking out some of my awesome merch like t-shirts, stickers, and all sorts of other really cool stuff at merch.classicminidiy.com. All right, let's get back to the episode. Now, like I said, we are gonna be continuing the supercharged engine build. Um, we are gonna pretty much be able to button up the remainder of the items today. Um, transfer case, the uh, clutch and flywheel. Um, on the other side, I'd like to get the radiator and the water pump installed. Um, and then at that point, we'll largely have the engine put back together. Um, I do want to run this engine outside of my car before putting it into the car it's gonna make the whole bedding in process a lot easier, and it's also gonna allow me to do a full inspection of the engine before I get it all situated in the car, so I don't have to end up taking it back out. Now don't forget, I am giving away a VMAX supercharge kit, so if you guys are looking to win a kit for your Classic Mini, um, head over to my merch store. All purchases on the merch store are gonna get you entered in to win a VMAX supercharger. So if you wanna win, head on down to that link. Now. Let's get over to the engine and start putting some more stuff together. All right, so now we're looking at the rear of the engine and you can see my primary gear is already fitted. I just did a video on how to set your primary gear end float that came out last Friday. Um, you can see that popping up in the corner. I'm not gonna be covering that in this video because I've already done it. Um, so we're gonna take this off for right now and we are going to apply a small amount of lubrication to these bushes right here. Very, very thin coating. Um, and then we're gonna put a little bit on the back over here and then we're gonna get our transfer case installed. One other thing that I didn't cover is the idler gear end float. This was checked back when I did my gearbox and the gearbox is obviously on the engine now. This is extremely important to do and has to be done with the engine and gearbox apart. I have done a video on that on my full gearbox rebuild a series that I did. So if you have any questions about that, that should be popping up in the corner as well. Um, but with all of those in spec already, my oil pump is installed, we're ready to install the transfer case here. Now the lube I'm using for this is a cam lube. I wanted something a little bit thicker. Um, this is the recommendation I was given by uh, Paul Jeffries on the builds that he does. And like I said, a very, very small amount, and I'm talking tiny, you just want this to be a coating on the inside of this bearing so, so that it doesn't bind or anything like that. Now with that lube installed, I'm also gonna put a tiny helping on my uh, on my thrust washer here. I will slide that on. Install our primary gear, just like that. Retaining ring. And our C-clamp. Now after we've done that, we are going to install our gasket on this face right here. Um, before we do, we need to make sure that we have all of our bolts that we need in order to screw this in because it's really annoying to start doing this and not have all those bolts. Now you can see here, I've actually got a stopper here. This holds the flywheel in place when you install it, um, or at least when you tighten it down. I'm gonna remove this um, because I don't want it on there while I'm actually installing the flywheel, um, only when I'm torquing it down. Now the next thing that we're gonna be installing is a rear main seal. Now this seal goes around your primary gear here, all the way down and right into that spot there. 
This is one of the most common places for oil to leak from. There's actually a small hole right down here at the bottom of your transfer case. Um, normally a cotter pin's in there. I need to reinstall a cotter pin here. Um, but what that does is it actually gives you a little visual indicator if you have oil leaking out through this hole, um, through your ma rear main seal here. Um, this seal holds back all the oil from your clutch, uh, you know, assembly, the flywheel, the clutch, all of it here, um, because this area needs to stay dry. If you get oil on your clutch, it's not going to work. It's going to slip. Um, so the purpose of this seal right here is to keep that oil out. Now this installing the seal can be a little frustrating and a little bit difficult um, if you don't have the right tool. Now the tool I'm talking about is this rear main seal installer tool. Now you have one sleeve, this goes over your primary gear here, protects your rear main seal from getting any sort of burrs, anything like that on it. And then you have a hammering face that you actually hammer the rear main seal down into place with the sleeve here, it goes over it. Um, it's pretty cool, it's pretty straightforward. Um, if you guys want this tool, this can be picked up from 7 Mini Parts and uh, I have a link to that in the description below. But basically, you're gonna install your rear main seal here. Just like this. And I like to slide it all the way down, mostly into place, just like that. And then just hammer it the last little bit in. I like to avoid hammering it as much as possible just because, well, I don't wanna damage it. And just like that, we have a rear main seal installed. You can see what I'm talking about. It really, really pays to have the right tool for the job when you're doing these things. Um, I've had a few comments recently actually that are like, yeah, you don't need a flywheel puller for this and you don't need this for that. And you know, while that might be true um, for you know lots of different jobs on this Mini, um, the thing is, if you spend a little bit of money to get the right tool, you are going to guarantee that things are installed properly and you're gonna guarantee things are going to last because you are using the factory tools that are necessary to install these things. So I know that kind of was a little bit of a tangent, but I just wanted to take a moment to say that because um, you know, having the right tool for the job is really, really important and uh, you know, is always going to yield better results for you. Now, the next thing that we're gonna install is a rear main seal dust shield. This is actually pretty great. These can be installed on both pre-Virto and Virto systems, though they only came standard on Virto systems. Um, you just slide it over your primary gear here, um, down into place, and one side actually says flywheel side on it, um, but it provides some additional protection between your flywheel and your um, rear main seal, all the dust from getting into this thing, ingressing into that. Um, it's just some added protection, but you can see here, um, fits right into place, pretty cool. Now it's crazy how much harder this is to turn with that seal in, but also these two bearings are now being loaded um, and the gears in there are being loaded. So you can still turn over things, you can still turn the gears over, which is pretty cool, but anyway, not that important. The main thing is we've got this ready to install the flywheel. The only thing left to do on this end here, um, well, in general, is to uh, rotate the engine so it's at top dead center. And I'm pretty sure we're almost at that with this keyway pointing up and down like that. I'm pretty sure we're already there. Um, we're just off a little bit. So I'm gonna turn that from the other side. All right, and there we go at top dead center. As you can see, it was just a little smidge of a movement, not too much at all. Now this clutch and flywheel setup is an RTS custom clutch made by TurboMark1 Mini on Instagram. It's two 1275 springs mated with a brand new steel flywheel and a brand new clutch from Mini Spares. It has a static foot-pound rating of 220 foot-pounds. That means that this clutch and flywheel setup is going to be more than up to the task of handling the power that I'm going to be putting down from the supercharger, plus considerable amounts more. Um, if you guys want to pick one of these up, you can head over to Turbo Mark One Mini on Instagram. I'll head up, put a link in my description. Head over there, show them some love, and pick yourself up an awesome clutch setup. 
All right, so next up, we are going to be installing our beautiful flywheel that you guys just saw from Turbo Mark One Mini. Um, we're gonna set that on here um, and line these up. And to make my job a little bit easier, I'm actually gonna rotate the engine so it's this side is up. It's gonna make a, I'm gonna be able to work with gravity. Now with that torqued up, we've got a flywheel installed, which is really exciting. Um, one thing I do wanna mention that might confuse some folks, um, this white line that was drawn on, um, on this specific setup from Turbo Mark One Mini, um, this is his referencing point, so it's reassembled correctly when it gets balanced. Um, this is not to indicate top dead center. I just wanna mention that because it confused me at first. I actually had to check that with him just to make sure. Um, but now we have a brand new clutch, flywheel, diaphragm, everything. And this is a Verto setup, which is a conversion from what it originally was on my car. Well, unfortunately, I forgot to hit record by mistake. And uh, so what we just did was lock these lock tabs out. And you can see here, it's a little counterintuitive. Normally you would knock the lock tabs in up against the side of your nut here. With the Verto setups, um, this nut right here comes with this recessed uh, washer on it, which unfortunately means every time you replace your clutch, you have to replace the bolt with the washer. That said, the way that you knock these lock tabs out is you actually knock them from the inside out. So you knock it out into these recesses on each side. Um, it's kind of counterintuitive, but when you knock them out, they do kind of tend to tear here. Um, so it's just worth noting, um, you'll probably have that happen. Some folks don't even knock these lock tabs out. Um, they'll use Loctite on the bolt itself. Um, in my case, I just went to the factory spec, which is 110 foot pounds on this bolt, and then knocked the lock tabs out. And there we have it, an installed clutch and flywheel. All right, so now before we get the uh, pulley installed and the new fan installed, I do wanna mention something that I'm doing a little bit differently on this build, and I'm giving this a shot. I've never used this before, so this is an experiment for me. Um, but you'll see this pulley right here is larger in diameter than the stock pulley, which is this one right here. Now, the way I understand this is that this new pulley right here is it's actually sold as a way to help increase the cooling potential of your engine. Um, because of the larger diameter, what you're gonna be doing is slowing down the coolant just a little bit um, inside your system so it's not moving the coolant as fast, it's still moving the same quantity of fluid, but it's moving it at a slower speed, which means that that coolant has more time to sit in your radiator and actually cool. My buddy has this installed on his red pickup that I installed that Super 998 on, um, and it has been running really well with this pulley setup, so I'm hopeful with this. Also, let's be real, this uh, alloy looks a lot better than this uh, old pulley does, if you, uh, if you ask me. Now, the only other thing that I need to get before we swap this out is a new set of hardware because that is looking tired and old and nasty. And on top of that, the threads are not long enough to reach the threaded portion of the water pump, so that's gonna have to get fitted. Um, it's gonna have to get fixed. One thing I am noticing here too is that this Porsche, this pulley here is actually a little bit taller. Um, it has a spacer on it and it looks like the spacer is built in. So hopefully that doesn't cause any problems with my Mark I. Um, you know, the Mark I has some size and space issues with the uh, radiator and everything. It's all very tight and there's the uh, fixed uh, shroud that's on the body of the car. So I'm hoping that this fits. Um, we'll be able to test this before it goes in the car because this mixed with the fan and the radiator can all be installed outside of the car. So I'm gonna give that a shot. If this doesn't fit, then I'm gonna have to use this pulley here. So let's get some new hardware and then, uh, and then we'll get this installed.
Well, ladies and gentlemen, we have a mostly assembled A-series supercharged engine. Pretty exciting stuff. Obviously, some of the primary things that you need to run are still missing. The oil filter housing, the distributor, the starter. As you can see, I've removed the supercharger off the back of it again. Um, I'm still in the mock-up phase, um, and I'm not gonna bring you through all that tedious stuff um, of like on and off and on and off and on and off. Um, I'll let you cut through all of that, you know, when we get through that. But hopefully on the next episode, we are going to be starting this engine. Um, my goal is to have this off of the stand and into a new engine stand that I'm hoping to weld together this weekend. Um, that is going to be used to run in the engine and uh, check to make sure that there's no leaks, that there's no clunks, there's nothing that is alarming um, or you know anything that needs to be you know something that I need to worry about. So I hope you guys enjoyed this episode. This has probably been one of the more fun ones to edit just because of all the fun little bits and bobs that have been going on. I'm curious to see what you guys think of these hoses. I love the look of these classic hoses. Um, I got them from MED. I have the bottom hose, the top hose, and then I have a ton of extra hose that I'm gonna be using for the heater, for my breather system, and for my charge cooler. So once this is all in the engine bay, all of those hoses are gonna match up and, uh, and look pretty dang cool. But anyways, that's gonna wrap up this episode of Classic Mini DIY. If you have any questions about the things that I did in this episode, feel free to post those in the comment section below. And a friendly reminder, I am giving away one of these superchargers. So if you wanna put one of these on your car and you know get some crazy power, have some fun in your Mini, you can get entries to win that supercharger by heading to the link in my description, merch.classicminidiy.com, and any purchase on the merch store is going to enter you to win the supercharged setup from VMAX S-Cart. But until I see you guys on the next one, enjoy those minis and motor on.